a treasurer's warning to homeowners. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee and let's have a look at this article from news.com.au. Treasurer Jim Chalmers warns homeowners that the worst is yet to come on interest rates and the economy. Well, interest rates are... Let's uh, bring this chart up. They're heading up. The cash rate was at 0.1%, or sorry, the target for the RBI was at 0.1%, which was a joke, which essentially zero. Now we're heading on up towards some predicting 3.35 or 3.5% by the end of the year. And that's going to have an impact on people's mortgages. The biggest, well, the greatest risk are those that have bought recently and that have extended themselves too far because the interest rate increases are going to, they're going to feel it. So let's have a look. Treasurer Jim Chalmers has warned homeowners that the worst is yet to come on interest rates and the economy amid aggressive rate hikes in the U.S. As the countdown continues to the October budget, the Treasurer is preparing to travel to the U.S. for meetings with the Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell and the World Bank President David Malpass. And he's warning Australians that the deeply concerning developments around the world are driving the discussions. These global challenges we confront are intensifying, not dissipating. Inflation is rampant. Central banks are responding with blunt and brutal rate rises and growth is slowing, Dr. Chalmers said. The economies of the US and Britain are in reverse. China has slowed markedly and the war in Ukraine sparked an energy crisis that shows no signs of abating. This is why the International Monetary Fund won't rule out another global recession. Hey, remember when when the only issue facing everyone was just a pandemic. <laughs> Boy, that, that seems so long ago now, doesn't it? Oh, that's funny. There you go. The warning comes as the Australian columnist, Robert Golispin, urged homeowners to batten down the hatches. We're set for stormy weather that will last well into 2024, he wrote. Because of Australia's foolish home lending spree in 2020 and 2021, the Commonwealth Bank estimates that our neutral rate is about 1% below that of the US, he said. This means our current Reserve Bank official market rate at 2.35% is already hitting the economy, but the impact is delayed by two to three months, signifying the gap between rate announcements and the hit to families with big mortgages. If we were forced to increase our interest rates to match a US 4.6% rate, it would mean another 2.25% in interest rate increases, which would cause carnage in our housing market and make the predictions of a 20 to 30% fall in housing prices a reality. Now, you've got to remember, when they're making these predictions of 20 to 30%, we just had an increase of about 20% in one year. So this isn't going to make housing affordable. So people have been waiting on the sidelines, hoping, expecting a massive crash. This is Ned. This isn't going to be the correction. Housing's still going to be so bloody expensive, even with this fall. It just means all the people that aped in during the lockdowns 2020, 2021, and bored at the insane you know, FOMO are going to be in the hall for a while. Mr. Chalmers, writing today in The Australian, warned that the ongoing impacts of COVID-19 have already forced Australia to fund billions of dollars in new spending for health care, aged care and emergency financial support, which the previous government had not budgeted for. I don't think anyone would have budgeted for it. The final budget outcome for last year will show a substantially smaller deficit figure than what was first projected, not just because of a big temporary boost from commodity prices, but also because billions of dollars that were promised weren't invested are now spilling into later years and still have to be paid for. While those budget improvements are temporary, the spending pressures are constant and compounding, Welcome short-term improvements in revenue raised from our resources in the near term go nowhere near to properly paying for the five fastest-growing areas of spending, healthcare, the NDIS, aged care, defense, and the rising cost of interest we pay to service $1 trillion of debt. So, I mean, here's the thing. If you argue against any of these issues, against healthcare, everyone's going to go off their nut at you. No, you can't do that. You know, you want to kill someone's grandmother. NDIS. No, you can't do that. You, you, you want to uh, destroy the life of a disabled person. Aged care. No, you can't do that. You know, the, the hardworking pensioners. Defense. 
no, you can't cut that. You will be will be at uh, at the whims of the next uh, media fear mongering piece. And interest rates, well, no, you can't cut spending. We need to grow more and more debt. Let future generations pay for it. It's a, it's a lose, 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 isn't it? It really is. How can you make an argument to cut back on any of these things or to privatize some of these things? I mean, the one issue with NDIS is everything costs the, the maximum that's allowed uh, for the government. So I wonder if all of this government spending in this scheme is limiting innovation. That's the one concern I have with regards to, or the main one, to be honest. Because, it, I mean, we're in a, a very advanced technological time. Surely a lot of these services could be provided in innovative ways, even healthcare as well. But there you go. So keep going. Despite this, low unemployment and economic growth suggests Australia will fare better than our peers. I'm optimistic and confident that our future, about the future, but realistic. Like other countries, we still face the now familiar unwelcome combination of supply chain disruptions, high and rising inflation and falling real wages, he said. Our challenges are primarily, though not exclusively, global. But a wasted decade of missed opportunities and warped priorities has made us more vulnerable to these shocks. Really? That means focusing on new areas where our policies and sensible investments can make a meaningful and realistic difference without making life harder for the independent reserve bank. This means responsible cost of living relief, okay, investing in our people, we already have their skills and their future, and beginning the hard task of long-term budget repair. What about cutting government spending, reducing the tax burden on the citizens, realizing that the government shouldn't be the biggest employer of people in this country? Wait a minute, no, no, these are, these are crazy libertarian ideas, small government ideas. We can't have that in the mainstream. I mean, this is labor we're dealing with here. Come on, they're just going to go more and more to the Greens. We'll see, but hey, we'll give them a shot. We'll see what happens. Mr. Chalmers is not referring to new measures in the budget, but existing cost of living election promises. For example, child care fee relief, which will come into effect next year. I mean... It's the same old shit. They're just throwing more money around. If you want to get childcare cheaper, you need to get the government out of it. But there's no way people will be willing to take that risk. I mean, Australia is just a country. Uh, it's, we're not a country. We're a nanny state, honestly. Just more and more rules. And all of those, even with the best intentions, add costs. It means getting wages growing by training people for higher wage opportunities. Why is the government involved in that? Shouldn't the individual be involved in that? Maybe the government needs to make it easier for people to get the training. Uh, anyway, Childcare changes to make it easier to earn more and supporting pay rises in the care economy. That's just, okay, that's just going to make it more expensive. It's going to be harder for people to take advantage of it. You've got to find ways to get out of that sector. He described the budget as a fairly standard bread and butter budget, suggesting it's the beginning, not the end, of a big national conversation about our economic challenges, the structural position of the budget going forward, and the kinds of choices we need to make as a country in the future about what our priorities are, what's affordable and what's fair. I'm more convinced than ever that Australians are up for real talk about the state of their economy and the budget, and that there's a hunger to work together. No one budget can deal with the pressures that have been building for a decade but hard work has begun. So, I mean, there we go. Let's let's have a look at this. So, I mean, let's see what the Labour government puts forward in their budget. I mean, it's their time now. They still seem to be blaming the previous government. How long can they, you know, push the blame? One election? Two elections? We'll have to see. Will they make any difference? Yeah, I mean, they're always slow. Uh, the influence uh, in our political establishment, I think, is more in the hands of the bureaucrats than the politicians. They can slowly shift the ship, but it's going to keep moving in one direction or another. I think a lot of the assumptions that we'll do better than other countries in the world are correct. I think Australia is pretty lucky that way. I think that's how we are, the lucky country. And we'll have to see. Perhaps there can be continued demand for our natural resources, which will provide another continued boost to our government and to well, all of us over here. What do you think, guys? Anyway, 
Is it all doom and gloom? Should we be worried? Should homeowners batten down the hatches? I mean, that's all common sense. Maybe the wealth effect will dry up a bit, but there's a lot of people that are still going to be doing okay. Anyway, thanks for watching. Check out my other channels, Heiser Bim and Heiser Says International, for other content and topics I discuss. If you're a fan and want to support the channel, you can financially via YouTube or Patreon, using our referral links, buying our merch, or calling us if you need an architect. Take care, everyone. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next episode of Heiser Says.